Hello, this is Kevin with 3G Store, and today I'm going to show you the PepWave device connector and show you just how easy it is to set up. You can set up the device connector for use as both an access point and a wireless repeater. All you have to do to set it up is make sure it is plugged into power and your device connector is ready. The Wi-Fi antenna will both pick up a signal wirelessly and rebroadcast out a new private network if you're looking to extend or create a secure network. All you have to do to set it up is connect your PC to the device connector with an Ethernet cable. Once you are connected, you'll go ahead and open up your computer and go to your system preferences. This is set up on a Mac and I'll show you Windows right after. Click on your network icon and you'll see your USB Ethernet connection or Ethernet connection depending on your Mac. Switch your IPv4 method to manually and enter the following IP address. 192.168.20.100 The next line for subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 Router is the address of your device connector. That's 192.168.20.1 Once these are entered, go ahead and click apply. Windows takes a couple more steps. You'll open up your network and internet and go to the network and sharing center. On the left hand side you'll click change adapter setting and on your ethernet connection right click it and head down and select properties. Now with the properties window if it's not visible right away scroll down and head to the section labeled internet protocol version 4. Click on it so it is highlighted and click the properties window. In this final window here's where you're going to enter the same settings that we did on the Mac. Click use following IP address and enter 192.168.20.100 Then you'll head to the subnet mask that by default is correct and for gateway it's 192.168.20.1 Leave the DNS section alone, go ahead and click OK and on the bottom of your screen click close. Now we're ready to actually configure the device connector so you'll open up your favorite web browser and enter 192.168 dot twenty dot one. This will either bring you directly to the device connector or let you know that there's an error viewing a certificate and you'll have to click proceed to continue. Here we have the device connector pulled up and on the left there's two different operating modes. You'll select the wired option if you want to run this as an access point plugged into another router or Wi-Fi if you're going to be using it as a wireless repeater for your home or for example a campground Wi-Fi. Setting this up, you'll click on the settings button and that will load up your screen where you're going to make a couple of different changes. There are a lot of different options here, but in its most basic configuration, there's only two sections that you'll need to change. Scroll down the page and you'll see a heading that's labeled Wi-Fi WAN settings. This is where you're going to select the name of the network that you're going to be repeating. In the wireless network name, click in the white box and the device connector will list out a number of different networks. Because this has a very long range, a thousand feet or more, you'll pick up a number of different networks. If we're using this network, we'll go ahead and click it. It'll automatically enter the authentication required, and you'll just need the Wi-Fi password for the network if there is one. Heading down to the bottom of the page, you'll go to the section labeled AP settings. This is where you'll set up the name of the Wi-Fi network your device connector is going to repeat. You can use configure automatically if you want it to repeat the same network, say you're extending an existing one, or if you're creating your own, you'll head to the configure manual section and enter your own name. We'll call this device connector generically. Authentication, you can choose your connection method, and then for encryption key, you'll enter your own password at least eight characters long. Once that has been entered, head to the very bottom of the page and click save. After a moment, your screen will refresh, and now you're ready to make sure this is connected. Head up on the top left and click Dashboard, and you'll be back on the very first page you saw when you first entered your device connector. On the top right, you'll see the status, and currently it says Wireless 1 is disconnected. In a few moments, it's going to begin searching for the signal, and it will try to attach to that first network that you're trying to either repeat or create a private network from. Now it says it is scanning and acquiring network address. After a few moments, the device connector will lock on to that host network and an IP address will show. At this point, you know the signal is ready, the device connector is set to be online, and at this point, you just have to set your computer back and test the internet connection. If you're setting this up on a Mac, you'll go right back into where we originally changed the settings and switch it back to DHCP. On the bottom of the screen, click Apply. 
and your network will disconnect and reconnect with a new IP address that's from the host network. At this point, you're ready to test your connection. On Windows, go ahead and switch everything back to automatic and click OK and close. Now we're ready to test out our internet connection. Go into your address bar and enter a website of your choice and make sure you have connectivity. If you do, you're ready to go. At this point, you can unplug the Ethernet cable from your device connector as it is already set up and you can connect to it through its Wi-Fi. When you unplug the device connector and plug it in again, it remembers all its settings and will automatically make your connection. For more information, visit 3gstore.com device connector, and for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.